Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm gonna tell you a little story. How did I start my week? Well, I started by forging five small or mini carving hatchets because I had somebody request one. And I feel like if it's a product that somebody else might like and it could turn out nicely, I'll do a couple because why just do one if you're gonna do the whole process. So I forged out five mini carving hatchets. This is the pattern for the handle that they're gonna go on. Just a fun little tool, useful, and sort of patterned after the hand axe that I recently put up on the website, but just a little bit longer and a little bit heavier head weight. Everything was going swimmingly, or so I thought. I went through most of the heat treat process and I decided just to double check and make sure that the heat treat was coming out properly. Now, I had been forging my axes off of a different 20 foot bar of steel stock and I'd come to the end of that, the last batch of hatchets and axes that I uh, did. I got those finished and I cut into a brand new 20 foot section of one inch by three inch 1060 carbon steel, or so I thought. Well, I pulled out my trusty file and I did a little bit of filing. So let me show you what happened. This hatchet bit has been austenitized and quenched and therefore should be hardened. If the steel has any appreciable amount of carbon content for the application and it's been hardened, that should not happen. Well, you might say I just messed up the heat treat, but I double checked it and I have heat treated a couple of axes and a few knives before, so that really was not the problem. Those five mini carving hatchets now all look like this because obviously they're junk. So what happened? Well, I do know what happened because I went and cut off a little slice off of the new bar of stock and did its own heat treat test, which I'm gonna show you here in a minute. And this is a very simple way to make sure that at the very least, the steel you're working with has an adequate amount of carbon to harden. Now this is a brand new 20 foot section of steel that I just got back that they replaced and it's supposed to be 1060, but so was the last one. So somewhere along the line, somebody messed up and painted a piece of mild steel red and it got put in with the 1060 steel. Now this doesn't usually happen, but being able to figure out if the steel that you have is at least close to what it's supposed to be is a useful thing to know. Now the steel that I use on my axes and hatchets is actually made down in Seguin, Texas at a mill there, and then it's distributed throughout the state. I actually buy it from some guys right here in town locally, and they get it from a distributor, distributor, you know, a little ways away, a bigger, a bigger hub. Now my local guys totally took care of me on this and went to bat for me, even though I'd had the steel longer than you'd normally make a return on, they were able to get the supplier to swap it out because it was not the steel that I ordered. All right, we've got our little sample piece. Instead of cutting into that and making a bunch of stuff out of it, we've got a little sample piece. We're gonna test it to make sure it is at least a medium carbon steel like it's supposed to be. process is very simple. I'm just going to let that heat up to around 1500 degrees. The temperature does not need to be precise for this. And we're going to quench it in Parks 50 oil. It should harden and I'll show you how you know that. All right, so that, that quenching temperature was probably closer to 1600 degrees. But like I said before, the temperature at this point point doesn't matter we're just trying to do a quick simple test if this is mild steel you can get it up to 1800 degrees and quench it and it's still not going to actually harden so the first thing I'm going to do is just stick this in the vise right like this and hit it with a hammer that's a good sign that means it's brittle which means it is hard 
take it out, put it back in and grab my file. This is just a Harbor Freight file because you know, testing your pieces of steel with it's gonna mess it up, but I don't really care. Except for a tiny divot, it is not digging in. A huge difference between the piece of steel we did earlier on this poor sad little, not really a hatchet, and this. Clearly, it's not the same steel. So you saw how that piece of steel off of the new bar behaved. We're gonna take this, heat it up, and do the same test. So there's different steels that you're gonna see in uh, axes, and most uh, small or, you know, semi-custom axe makers will use something with about 0.4 to 0.5 percent carbon in it which is totally fine too this is this is supposed to have 0.6 percent carbon in it but this is the uh this is the uh, axe one of the axes that i forged the hatchet out of the uh steel that was supposed to be 1060 we're giving it a test here whoops that was one of my favorite little hammer well, I'm gonna have to rehandle that. Okay, so clearly it's not very brittle. So let's try the old file test on it. It bent a little bit. All right, I don't know if you can see how it's bent over. So it's uh, ductile still. This file is getting very dull. There's no teeth on the edge, so. You can see that nice big divot. Hopefully you can see that nice big divot there in the in the edge. Anyway, you can file on it all day long. These are all old and dull files, but they still cut readily into the steel. So you can see that right there, hopefully. So that shows you what a carbon content steel that is even remotely close to what it needs to be for a tool, an edge tool, or even a hammer for that matter, that's what it's gonna behave like. Now you can do the same thing, and I did do the same thing with the other piece of steel. It will not snap off, and you can file it pretty easily. It gets a tiny bit harder, but nothing, if you water quench it, but nothing compared to the hardness that you should get. So. Are you gonna to need to be able to use this on different steels that you get? Well, hopefully not. If you go with a reputable provider of steel, then you're probably never gonna to have to worry about this. But there are instances, maybe you're using a reclaimed piece of steel, something like that. Just knowing if it has enough carbon content to harden, at the very least, is useful and helpful. And this is probably rudimentary. I'm spilling my coffee everywhere, but it's probably rudimentary for a lot of you. But if you're just getting into bladesmithing and blacksmithing, this is a very useful bit of information to know and to know how to do this. So I've got sort of a unique situation here. I only order this steel for the axes and hatchets from this particular provider. And you know, the regional uh, supplier or maybe the mill, you know, somebody messed up. Hey, you know, it happens sometimes. So if you've ever, if you're ever concerned about the steel that you're gonna be using, or you're, you're not quite sure for some reason, then this is a little tip to help you figure that out. Appreciate you guys watching as always, and we will see you on the next video.